I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, we're excited to present a new Force Leaders event. This time we're going to be talking about load pins. Thanks for joining. Absolutely. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you everyone for joining today. Uh, we've got a, a good educational webinar lined up here to talk about load pins, uh, applications for them, uh, special considerations to keep in mind when both specking and installing and using, uh, as well as some considerations to ensure you get the best performance possible out of them. Uh, I believe Elliot will also be covering some different uh, system level solutions uh, where load pins uh, maybe a, a good choice for and some of the versatility we have on getting that signal from the load pin and what we can do uh, with that signal for displaying or reporting purposes. So uh, Elliot's going to be handling most of this today. Elliot's been with Interface for a number of years now. Uh, very experienced in a lot of different uh, territories, different industries, uh, as well as different products. So I'm glad he can uh, partake here. So Elliot, if you're ready, I'll hand it over to you. Who is using load pins and why? So uh, these are designed for a lot of different diverse applications, typically as replacements for existing clevis or pivot pins in, in, in existing assemblies. Um, often clams are used in rope, chain, uh, brake anchors, sheaves, shackles, bearing blocks, and pivots. Uh, very common in lifting and rigging mechanisms for construction, structural assemblies, and moving devices. Um, again, very convenient to integrate into ex existing structures. Um, the industries using this type of product run the gamut um, anywhere from infrastructure, uh, aerospace and defense, industrial automation, manufacturing, maritime, and, and uh, many energy markets uh, such as oil and gas. Uh, again, anyone that's doing force measurement and has an existing uh, structure that they would like to retrofit a force measurement solution into, um, a load pin can oftentimes be an option. Um, Typically, it's going to be a very cost-effective solution. Um, manufactured out of a, a very rugged stainless steel material. Um, again, since it's replacing an existing item, uh, typically it's fairly easy to retrofit, provided the assembly is amenable to the uh, required geometries for a load pin. Um, provides a means of, of monitoring for safety. So if you have a hoisting application or something that is uh, uh, has a safety requirement. It's a great way to monitor for, for forces or potential overloads. Um, and we'll touch more on this later, but due to the um, also, again, oil and gas markets, so uh, intrinsically safe is also another aspect that can be offered with these load pins. And then kind of by the nature of the load pin design itself, uh, they're going to be a very high IP um, and can be offered in, in waterproof ratings. So uh, again, that stainless material and kind of just the nature of the design uh, makes it very amenable to that type of an application. Um, and many times, uh, actually probably 95% of the time, I guess I would say, uh, these are customized for the application. So it seems that, that no one customer's mechanical assembly is quite the same. So these are all pretty much built to print. Um, so it doesn't matter if you have a non-standard configuration, um, we can manufacture a load pin to fit. And typically speaking, for the majority of these, there's not going to be any um, engineering charges or NRE associated with them. Um, and these can also be used to integrate these and in, in develop a smarter measurement system or provide some sort of a feedback or safety monitoring system using the low pins output in combination with uh, some of our instrumentation we offer. Um, so models and design aspects of load pins. Um, so the load pins themselves uh, use a similar technology, well, same technology as a load itself, right? It's a wheatstone bridge uh, using strain gauges. Um, typically speaking, these are an internally gauged item. So you'd have the, the pin itself uh, with a, uh, a center bore through it. And we would actually machine two grooves into the outer circumference to help define the shear planes. And you can see we have a center applied force on there. You can imagine that as being the uh, like a tongue assembly. And then the reaction surfaces on the outside of the pin, uh, which would be perhaps uh, constrained by a clevis of some, of some type or some sort of a reaction surface. Again, uh, typically these are going to be manufactured in stainless steel, um, although sometimes we do get into high carbon steels for higher capacity um, load pins of a specific type. Uh, typically they're going to be a welded uh, construction, so that internal cavity is going to be welded and sealed afterwards. There's also different configurations. We'd use a cap with an O-ring. Um, 
uh, but still would have that uh, very, very robust seal. Um, and then we, uh, the signal or the cable exit um, is something we always want to pay attention to. Um, that can be configured multiple ways. We'll, we'll touch on that more later. Um, but it does provide uh, the manufacturing techniques and options do provide a means of uh, environmental protection and for additional regularization. Um, moving on to the next slide, uh, again, measures tensile and compression forces. Um, different options include multiple bridges, so we can fit uh, redundancy onto the pins um, if you want to do uh, perhaps bridge tracking or just uh, uh, have a, uh, a separate signal for measurement and control. Um, these can also be offered with multiple axes, typically in an XY configuration. Um, and then custom designs to fit, as touched on before, um, we offer cable versions, both with connectors or integral cables. And we do have wireless configurations available as well with an integrated wireless signal conditioner on the pin itself. And just as with the load cell, we can also offer internal shunt calibration with these. Um, as touched on, uh, the many options for the cable exit itself. This is one of the aspects that kind of can help define the application itself um, and is, is something that should be considered when, when designing the pin itself for your application. So we've got a couple configurations noted here. Um, we'll start with the cable version. So we can have an axial cable exit with the uh, cable itself exiting from the end of the pin. Um, pretty common and can be fairly easy to integrate uh, given the, uh, the exit direction. We can also offer a radio cable exit uh, with it exiting out the side of the pin. Uh, this can be rotated about the circumference of the pin, dependent on um, your required orientation. Um, some pros and cons here, and just like with the load cell, if you have an integral cable and it is damaged, um, that can be problematic. And oftentimes uh, you would have to return it to uh, the factory for service on a, in an ideal use case. Um, a lot of times we recommend using a connector uh, just because if something untoward happens to the cable, it's a relatively, sip, uh, a relatively simple remedy to simply replace the cable as opposed to have to, you know, um, place it all the way back in the pen. Um, if we talk about connectors, uh, we can also do radial and axial um, connector exits. Um, there's another example here that can be very handy. A lot of times these pens are going to very industrial environments or environments where there are uh, high potential for damage. Let's say someone's working on some rigging and the end of the pen comes in contact with something. Um, it can experience damage, so we can recess the connector as as imaged in, a, in that center image back into the pen and uh, provide an additional degree of protection for that. Um, Anti-rotation is another, another requirement for a load pen. Um, you have to have a way of aligning the pen rotationally um, as that pen is rotated about its nominal axis, you can get a loss of sensitivity uh, depending on, on that misalignment. So we want to have a way to align it rotationally. So we call that an anti-rotation feature. Uh, typically speaking, uh, we would use a what's called a keeper plate um, where we machine a flat into the head of the load pen. And then you would have um, a keeper plate with uh, a bolt hole configuration of some type that would fasten to the structure and uh, both serve in, in, in some cases as axial retention and rotational alignment. Um, if there's an additional concern with axial retention, uh, there's a number of things we can do um, in that regard with uh, different uh, features. Uh, we can you know, use a nut, a split cotter pin arrangement with a, with a washer. Um, we've had some customers come to us that want an end plate with a bolt pattern in it so they can bolt it into their structure essentially. So there's a number of ways that we can deal with that. I would just stress that it's it's going to be application specific, and we are more than happy to customize whatever that retention is for your specific requirement. Um, greaseways, if there is a, a bearing block or some sort of rotation required about the load pen and it needs lubrication, we can also facilitate greaseways um, in a number of configurations on the pen. Um, integration considerations. Again, easy to integrate into existing assemblies where a pin or bolt already exists. Uh, oftentimes, it's going to be designed around the existing bolt or pin diameter um, and, and dimension. So um, again, real-time monitoring for both safety and performance. Again, lifting requirements oftentimes are very safety critical, so that monitoring is, is essential. Um, we'll touch a little bit more on this 
later, but a rigid support structure is required to minimize bending forces imparted on the pin. Uh, just with as as with any any load cell type of an application, ideally uh, the deflection would be occurring in the sensing element of the pin itself, with uh, minimal deflection occurring elsewhere in the loading structure or the load string. Um, and again, cable exit can be optimized for specific installation or space requirements. Um, as mentioned, if you knock the cable off the end of the pen, if it's a non-connectorized version of a pen, it can be an issue. So emphasis really needs to be placed on, on protection of the cabling system um, in the initial design. Um, and we need to have them fixed both axial and radially uh, to ensure accurate and repeatable results. Um, as mentioned, it is critical that the applied force is aligned with the indicated measurement axis. Uh, we'll touch a little more specifically on that later on in this presentation in terms of potential errors due to misalignment. And again, standard pins designed for force measurement in one direction only. Here we have a pretty standard um, load pin configuration uh, where we have a, a radio cable exit, a standard keeper plate, and you'll see that we have um, two reaction surfaces and the, uh, we call that the clevis and that tongue loading assembly where the, where the load would be applied. Pretty standard configuration there. And then there off to the right there, you can see that's uh, an image of our wireless broadcast modules, which would typically be installed in the head of the pin. <clears throat> um, another very common application method that's it's proven popular um, over the last several years has been some of our load shackles. Uh, these utilize an, an existing Crosby style, potentially certified shackle um, in a number of different uh, configurations, a bow or a D-type or, or any of those, those lifting type shackles that, that include certification um, with the load pin that's integrated into it. A couple advantages here. It offers a uh, certified shackle solution with a sensing element uh, and the pin is already designed around those shackle dimensions. So there's no need for customization to fit. Uh, these are also available and recommended to be used with a centralizing bobbin if you're using like a wire rope or a rope application uh, where there could be some potential for misalignment. Again, you want to have that structure completely supported. Uh, as you might imagine, that, that wire rope is going to be a smaller diameter than that, that center of the pin. That bobbin helps spread the load um, across the entire surface of the pin, which is, is re recommended for best results. And then, of course, High quality shackles are, are crucial um, and uh, we would provide these with uh, proof load certification. Installation factors, um, just to kind of facilitate, there is a marking on the pin indicating the primary axis. Uh, typically there'll be an arrow on the head indicating that loading direction. Um, kind of a handy reference. Uh, make sure you get that installed correctly. Um, a lot of times as well, uh, we can provide flats or different mechanical features on the pin itself to help facilitate that alignment. Um, surface hardness details for uh, ideally the surface of the loading structure would be a similar hardness to the pin itself. Um, typically it's a 17.4 hardened to RC32. Um, we, again, the idea here being to prevent any deflection from occurring other than um, the sensing element of the pin itself uh, that could manifest as errors. <clears throat> so installation factors, um, again, the fit of the pin within the structure itself is important to the overall performance of the load pin. So not only surface hardness, but uh, the clearance uh, between the uh, reaction surfaces and the loading surface. Uh, optimally, we recommend an H7 G6 clearance. We'll touch on the next slide with that. Um, however, that's not always possible in the field. You might imagine if you have a field technician in some sort of a large assembly that's trying to install uh, this pin in a, a very large assembly, it can be very challenging to try to align those features. Um, so if you need to run a slightly looser tolerance, it is possible. There is a trade-off though. It could reduce your repeatability specification and there could be increased errors as a result. The H7 G6 fit itself is um, defined as a clearance fit. Uh, it's a sliding fit not intended to run freely, but to move and turn freely and locate accurately. 
Um, installation techniques. Um, you want to make sure that the pin is held captive. Um, uh, again, uh, keeper plates used pretty commonly, as well as other alignment features, flats, things like that. Um, needs to be locked into position. Um, yeah, that's going to be really affect your repeatability. If you have some variability in the loading alignment or if the pin's loose and has the flexibility to rotate or move axially, you're going to see some, some impact on your repeatability specifications. Um, if you're using it with a wireless telemetry device, you should also always make sure that there is a clear line of sight to uh, the receiver module, or there is a suitable antenna or repeater array set up to facilitate line of sight uh, for those modules. Um, installation itself, uh, this should always be done by hand where possible. Obviously, if there's some larger diameter pins for higher capacities, you can build in some mechanical features to potentially draw the load pin in, such as a, a bolt pattern on one end. Um, one of the things you'd never want to do is to use the load pin as a drift or use other some sort of a um, insertion technique, such as um, uh, percussive impact or hitting with a hammer to 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 drive it in. So always always needs to be um, uh, installed in a manner such that you're not going to impart a shock load on the pin. <clears throat> um, indirectly applied loads, uh, the pin can be installed within a sheave system and monitor the resultant force applied to the sheave. Um, the load applied to the wire and the wrap angle that the wire makes will determine the resultant force. Uh, the graph here attached indicates the load on the sheave versus wire load tension. You can see how that wrap angle affects that. Um, varying force angles. Uh, this is directly related to that rotation or the potential for rotation and the potential error or loss of sensitivity. So if that angle of force applied to the standard low pin varies in use, uh, that could be a change in wrap angle um, or misalignment in the pin itself. Uh, then you're going to see a loss in output or in a loss of sensitivity uh, in the pin. Uh, you could see up to about plus or minus eight degrees before you see a loss in, in signal of about 1%. So um, you can see the importance of uh, making sure that that pin is located rotationally. Um, for applications that have a high degree of either wrap angle or load direction, uh, you can use a um, an XY load pin. So as, as we mentioned earlier, this would be a load pin with two bridges, uh, one in the primary load axis and one 90 degrees offset from there, as you can see in the diagram there. Um, this will give you two outputs that you can use to calculate the resultant force uh, from the force in both axes. And you can see as uh, the chart there shows, as that force rotates from directly on the primary axis to 90 degree opposed, you're going to see the resultant output signal from each bridge diverge into so one's at full sensitivity and the other is nominally at uh, zero sensitivity. Um, load pin capabilities. <clears throat> Again, kind of by nature uh, of their design, very robust and rugged, um, measuring tension and compression forces. Um, another application we see would be like a tensiometer where you would have uh, some, uh, several pulleys in line and you could use the load pin as an idler pulley and measure resultant line tension using that. Um, stainless steel construction, um, strain gauge uh, based design, so Wheatstone Bridge, again just like our load cells, um, relatively low risk. Uh, in the installation, given that you're replicating an existing design or an existing bolt design, I should say, um, and non intrusive by its nature, as again, if it's an existing structure, it's just replacing part of that structure. Um, specialty features, things that we can do um, above and beyond IP67 ratings. Um, we've done submersible load pins, so um, we'll touch on those applications, but uh, load pins that are designed to be submerged for long periods of time. Wireless configurations. Um, ideal for use in systems requiring feedback or control. And uh, our have, we have many uh, different instrumentation options to facilitate those control and feedback options, um, including alert capabilities for safety monitoring. All right, so standard and custom pins. Um, so we do have standard models available. 
Um, as mentioned, the majority of the pins are going to be custom, but uh, as with many of our shackle pins, there are some standard dimensions that are offered. Um, so these are all going to be stainless steel construction. Um, should add that there are some of the shackle cells that will be carbon steel. Um, capacity is up to 3 million pounds, uh, so very high capacities. Uh, wireless load pins, same, uh, same capacity range can be offered. Batteries, uh, it's a very low, low power consuming device, so you can have long battery life up to about a 600 meter range that can be extended with different uh, repeater modules and potentially antenna options. Uh, these are all configured and calibrated via PC using a base station telemetry toolkit. Uh, these are very nice because uh, these can be recalibrated and, and configured in the field, um, including uh, optimizing the signal broadcast settings from the module to optimize battery life or meet specific sampling requirements. Again, compatible with all of our interface WTS wireless products and does have a robust lightweight housing that can be environmentally sealed, sealed to IP67. Um, in terms of dimensional offerings for these, uh, this is a table showing kind of the standard range of pins um, of a range between two and a half to 1500 metric tons. Uh, again, most of these will not match identically to these dimensions, but this is a useful reference uh, for defining potential for your application. So if you know you have a specific loading condition and a pen diameter, um, this can be used to determine if it would be a suit if, if a load pin would be suitable for your specific loading condition and installation. Um, load rating is important. Uh, we use a special high strength steel uh, to optimize load bearing capabilities. Um, at some point there's going to be an, uh, a compromise between output sensitivity and your application. So if you have a high safety factor requirement. Let's say you have a five to one lifting requirement. Then there's going to be a trade off in that you're probably going to have to have a slightly lower sensitivity in a pin. Uh, whereas if you're more, more comfortable with a standard three to one safety rating or 150% proof load, then you're going to be able to have more output from the pin. Um, so there is a range that, that would be optimized about each specific loading. <clears throat> Um, custom pens, engineered order. So typically, as it works, you guys, a customer would come to us with a specific set of application requirements, um, including a definition of dimensions and loading um, condition. Uh, we would design to spec, uh, go through the range of options, be it wireless or cabled, um, peak load requirements, and uh, instrumentation uh, that would be required. So. Uh, Generally, we want to know environmental conditions, safety requirements, output signal types, uh, and, and then cabling and uh, anti-rotation and axial retention features to get going on that. We do have a configurator up on the website as well. Um, I'd encourage you to, to take a look at that. Um, this just helps define the application for us so we can best respond to meet your needs. Um, new found applications. Um, we've seen an increase in maritime use cases, um, lots of times used in cranes for hoisting vessels. Uh, we've seen some interesting uh, applications recently around uh, shipbuilding where people may need to instrument an existing lift or structure used to move a vessel. Um, we've also done some submerged mooring. We'll touch more on this in the next in the next energy slide, um, but uh, submersible, very common. Let's say the mooring application where you have a uh, a pin that's uh, on a mooring line, uh, helpful to monitor tension force on, in that application, and then force measurement for sheaves, pulley assemblies, and uh, marine winches. Um, one of the more neat applications we've done in the last several years was a series of very large capacity load cells, 2.7 million pounds each, um, 34 load pins total in the assembly. These pins were used on uh, a bridge uh, in a seismically active part of the world to monitor for potential damage to the bridge. The idea being that uh, if they were monitoring the forces on the pins during a seismic event, they could uh, ascertain whether or not there was potential for structural damage to the bridge. Um, this 
project used um, our wireless acquisition modules. Um, yeah, in addition to some solar panels, so there was no concern with battery life uh, in most cases, and uh, essentially real-time load monitoring on the dampers on this bridge. So very neat application. <clears throat> um, an example of real-time force measurement uh, with our wireless system, uh, crane force. So you'd have a load pin installed up in the actual sheave of the pin, I'll call it, or sheave of the crane. And there's a variety of ways you can pull the data off the pin, assuming you're using the wireless configuration. Uh, anything from a wireless display um, to just a, a, a basic USB base station back to a PC. Uh, any of these WTS products would include our Log100 software, uh, which allows you to configure specific projects and set alarms um, and different notifications. So very versatile. Um, and is also high IP. Obviously, if it's in the top of a crane, you probably don't want to have to go up there and take it down every time there's a threat of rain. So, so structural use cases, um, weight bearing construction, uh, you could use these for measuring payload um, in infrastructure and construction. Uh, so let's say you have a, a, a payload of some type, be it in a scale, be it in a hopper, uh, any any kind of application where you need to measure um, the loads where perhaps there's a bolted assembly and you can replace the bolt with a load pin. Um, aerospace and defense, we've seen some applications uh, where uh, there is existing aerospace test stands and they found it very economical to go back and retrofit uh, some existing joints with load pins um, and it was able to meet their accuracy requirements. Um, again, touched on the, uh, the bridge projects, the structural engineering aspect of that, uh, cranes and scale lifting mechanisms. Um, so you need to measure um, load drops and uh, monitor for maximum capacity, make sure you're metering out the, the, correct, the correct amount of material um, and while not exceeding the capacity of the crane. Um, energy use cases. Um, we see this for, for rigging quite frequently as well uh, with the shackles. Uh, people are, are picking up items, need to make sure that their, their rigging structures within safety limits and tolerances, uh, pulling and lift designs, uh, high EP rating. I uh, did want to touch on this. Um, if you had, we've seen some use cases where people need to submerge uh, different structures in flows like a river or ocean current um, and the high EP rating of the pens facilitate very well uh, this type of an application. Uh, we do offer some specific uh, additional protections that I'll touch on here in a few slides um, to better facilitate and, uh, I guess, make the load pen as suitable as possible for that type of an application. And again, intrinsically safe uh, options are available for hazardous environments. Uh, differences and advantages. Um, the load pens, uh, they're designed around your structure. Uh, so don't normally require any change to the mechanical structure uh, beyond uh, a means to facilitate the anti-rotation feature in most cases. Um, again, inherently waterproof by design. Uh, touched on this on the previous slide, extra protection can be provided um, in the form of uh, hydraulic hose over the signal cable. Uh, you, you might imagine in a current flow or in a river, there is the potential for debris. And if the debris impacts that cable exit, it can cause damage. Uh, so we do offer special designs with both mechanical protection for the cable exit and additional organization of the signal cable itself with the hydraulic hose. <clears throat> uh, great sensors to use for smart systems. Um, automated feedback uh, integrates with all types of instrumentation. Um, if you have instrumentation that works with the load cell, it can be configured to work with our load pin. Um, we have different output options, so if you have a different instrumentation type uh, or you want a digital output protocol, that's something we can provide. Uh, relatively simple device, easy to use. Uh, hardiness of designs, uh, it's ideal for, for many rugged use case environments. Um, again, we wouldn't couch this necessarily as a precision force measurement product, such as our other low profile load cells and metrology type applications, but it does offer a means to provide a uh, an easily facilitated force measurement into an existing structure. Uh, 
Um, WTS touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, the wanted to touch on this again due to the just the, the sheer multitude of options we have available for this WTS system. Again, these modules can be can be installed on any of our, our load pens and come back to any of our receiving devices um, in the WTS family. So we have anything ranging from industrial output modules. These are provided a, an analog output signal, um, uh, such as a plus or minus 10 or a four to 20 output um, or a large analog display, um, or it's even something as simple as a handheld display uh, that can be walked around various load pins and, and toggle to see either a summed load or individual loads on each pin. So if there's an application you're wondering if we have a solution for in regards to the wireless solutions, we encourage you to reach out to us. Um, we've done a lot of really unique things with these with this family of, of instrumentation. Uh, frequently asked questions. Uh, why are they custom built? Um, it seems that every joint is just a little bit different. So um, customer structures change and are different from one another. So just a lot of times kind of by their nature, uh, we seem to see uh, the majority of these inquiries be, be custom in nature and we are just to key key on that we are happy to do it we don't charge any for the customization or the nre and the vast majority of cases um, so please reach out to us with your dimensions and we'll see what we can do um, when is ideal to inter engage interface for low pin applications uh, anytime you think you have a an opportunity to integrate or you're looking to integrate a force measurement measurement solution into an existing um, set of hardware, uh, it would be a great time um, to reach out. And I, I obviously we will uh, engage with a list of questions to make sure we, we best design the load pin around your needs. Um, can they be amplified? Yes, these are also available with integrated amplifiers. Um, typically, it's going to we have uh, options for, for voltage uh, and current kind of as a standard and then some digital protocols as well. Um, proof loading, do we provide a proof load and at what percentage? This is a, a, a common question. The typical proof load um, is going to be 150% of capacity. For some customers that have uh, critical applications that we've seen many require a three to one yield safety margin, we can also proof load above that 150%. Um, again, the trade off there would be your output sensitivity uh, versus your nominal loading. <clears throat> Typical timeline to design, manufacture, and ship. Um, that's going to be somewhat contingent upon the quantity and capacity range of the pens. Typically speaking, it's going to be looking in the six to eight week range, um, including the engineering, uh, drawing approval, and processing time. So six to eight weeks typical to ship. Uh, calibration options. This is a this is a great question. Um, the performance of a load pen can often be very well, not often is very contingent upon the loading structure it's in. So we typically would always advise to calibrate as similarly as they're going to be used in the field. Um, we've gone up to including customer fixtures in our calibration stands um, to mimic essentially the way they're going to be installed in the field um, to provide best real world calibration results to our customers. So. Uh, we can calibrate it either using a standard set of V-blocks um, or if you, you know, it's a more critical application, you want to try to replicate your loading conditions, uh, you can uh, either request we build fixtures for you that replicate what you're using in the field or um, you, we can investigate you sitting in your fixtures um, for us to use in our calibration uh, machines where possible. Obviously, there's going to be some, some, some size and footprint constraints around what we're able to do, but we're always willing to work with uh, the customer on those calibration options. Uh, do you provide a design uh, file? Uh, we do. Um, most of the times this is provided after re receipt of, of an order. Um, so the way we normally would work this is our customer would come to us with a set of dimensions and environmental conditions, safety overload requirements and and uh, loading condition, and we would provide a quotation. Um, and then after an order is is, is issued, uh, generally, we would generate um, an outline approval drawing and uh, a CAD model if if requested. Um, quality: all of the the test machines are calibrated and certified annually, in accordance with BS ISO 7500. 
um, machinery directive compliance, ISO 13849, uh, full traceability, including MPI testing, ultrasonic testing, certificates of origin, three to one material specs, certificates of conformity, and certificates for secondary components. Um, each load pin is marked with an individual serial number, CE label, and the safe working load of the load pin. Um, so why interface? Um, the same quality that you've come to expect from our other interface uh, products uh, applies to the load pins. Uh, these are all, all engineered to order. So come to us with your dimensions and it's gonna be custom engineered around your requirements. Um, the best performing and most accurate load pins in the industry. Um, we've talked about the, uh, the material and the rug ruggedization of these load pins. So high durability and environmental grade. And then of course the interface technical support and application expertise. Beyond that, Jamie, I, I think we're ready to open up to questions. And we'll address any questions that you have. We did answer the question from Tim about how force is applied. And uh, some of there was an earlier question about the casings uh, that are available. And I think that primarily is around the battery casing of the WTS. Uh, and durability. I think we've addressed that. Anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, the cases are rated IP67, um, and if, if something untoward was to happen, we can offer replacements on those as well. We also will be placing this uh, presentation on our YouTube channel, Interface Force YouTube channel, as well as online on our site. We do have technical references and data sheets that we're happy to send to you. But as presented here, the best place to start is usually engaging with our application engineers to really get your requirements uh, to ensure that we get it to spec. So if anybody has any questions, now is a great time to ask our team. Elliot is asking how many amplifiers, uh, 4 to 20 signals can be in one pin. I know we've certainly done dual bridge. Uh, Ken, I don't know if you can offer, have we done triple, triple amplify bridge yet? I think it's available um, a four to 20, definitely on a dual bridge, no problem, or a biaxial uh, would be no problem as well. Depends we, we, on the geometry, I think, as well. Yeah, it's going to be somewhat contingent upon uh, the diameter of the pen. Um, we've done up to uh, four bridges thus far. So, Tom, expected accuracy. Um, we would expect, we typically would couch this around a, a, half, a half percent measurement. Um, that's typically highly contingent upon the loading structure and the configure of the application. Um, so as, as mentioned earlier, we always want to try to replicate, like we, in a metrology type environment, uh, the, the pin's going to perform better. So anywhere from a quarter percent up. Um, but that's why we want to try to replicate the customer's specific uh, loading conditions so we can best characterize the pins expected actual performance in the field. Yeah, speaking of performance, I think high level, the key is that we want these pins to be operating in a double shear. Uh, we do not want them bending, right? So we talked about material hardness. We talked about concentricity and, uh, uh, excuse me, radial tolerances, right? Uh, all those things, if you have soft reaction surfaces or if you have things that allow for a lot of slop, uh, you'll end up in a, in a scenario uh, or also if the load is not evenly distributed across the different pin surfaces of the pin, right? Uh, you can end up in a situation then where the pin is more bending, right? Rather than having the three components held and loaded through a double shear. So the 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 tighter you can keep the pin in a double shear, the better performance you're going to have. Brandon, the, the locking features that don't require mods. So I'm assuming you may you're referring to like an existing off the shelf shackle, perhaps. Um, if so, um, these the shackle pins are available with, um, I call it like a fork feature almost, that would extend up from the head of the pin and have retention features that um, mechanically react the pin against the shackle. So uh, the, the short answer to your question is uh, yes, we do. Jose, I think you're, you're are you asking if um, these can be submerged in oil or if they the bearing surfaces will, will tolerate an oil coat? I'll just touch on, on the greaseways then. So uh, these are available with greaseways. Um, so if there is a requirement for lubrication uh, on the pin itself, 
the answer is yeah, that's something we, we can facilitate. Um, again, IP, IP ratings can be sufficient for um, exposure to uh, potential oil and lubricants. I want to thank everyone for participating in today's event. Our next event will be on custom solutions. We have some exciting news to share with everyone about the types of solutions we're going to uh, we're coming across, ways in which we're configuring more smart systems, building all the components together. So be sure to join us uh, March 30th, the 20 uh, it's the same time period. March 30th registration is already online and available. We'll make sure you get an invite for sure. But uh, thanks, Elliot, Brian, Ken, everyone for participating, uh, providing this great presentation today. Thank you for everyone joining us. We really appreciate your time. And again, we'll be posting the recording that, uh, and share it with you in a follow-up. Thank you, everyone. All right. <clears throat> well, thank you, Elliot, and thank you all for joining. I know your time is valuable. Um, again, we'll have this available, and please do not hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, we'll be happy to engage on any load pin or shackle opportunities and ensure you get a good solution and are aware of any additional features. Remember.